today. Since Mario and Sonic aren't at the Olympics, maybe they could be here. This is Chill Point. Didn't, uh, they didn't respond to your, your invite email, huh? That's that's only if you put the cartridge on to, into the top yeah. of the thing. It's Sonic's 30th Olympiad, and <laughs> I loved that cartridge. The the uh, Sonic and Knuckles cartridge. I remember. Oh, I, I, I actually saw a thing. Uh, uh, I don't know a year or two ago that somebody actually like um, did the full rundown of what that cartridge is, like yeah, yeah. what they had done. Yeah. Because I remember, like, as a kid. It was this like semi mythical thing. It was like it will put like knuckles into any game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what everyone said, right? Yeah, but it was actually just like two games. Yeah, yeah. But it had both games inside it, and and it depending on and it, you know, checked the ROM and then sw- swapped between two sets of uh, stuff inside. Just you know, it was that a brilliant, makes the most sense. It was yeah. a brilliant idea, and yeah. and you know they had stuff to reuse. Yeah, it was the yeah. original DLC. Uh, DLC. But yeah. like, what made it cool was it had the little flip top lid. Yeah. And essentially, that it felt like a little bit of a transformer because mm. you just put other things on it. Anyway, uh, hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Chill Point, the show where we talk about the week's video game news as well as the episode of Checkpoint that went up this week. Mm-hmm. It's also the show that has the highest expectations of our, our viewers ever, but we don't tell you what those expectations are so that we can be secretly disappointed in you later. Oh, wait. It's that we have expectations we of have the viewers? We have expectations of them. Yeah. Oh. We don't tell them what they are. No, it's an ARG, yeah. And then later we're secretly disappointed in them. Mm. <laughs> it's... I'm giving away so many behind-the-scenes lies. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't feel bad though. Most YouTubers are secretly disappointed in some other fans. Mm. Well, <laughs> they go to AO3 and they're like, "Oh, really? Oh no!" Oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't look for your own fan fiction. Look uh. for your friends' fan fiction. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's talk about uh, some stuff. So, um, I something that was a little bit weird this week. Mm-hmm. I guess not that weird, but just this week, um, it felt like there was, and talked about a little bit, little bit about this on Chill Point last week. It felt like there was uh, a bunch of news that came out, even like sort of more so than usual, like Thursday afternoon, Friday. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so uh, we we went back a little farther than sometimes we do for this episode of Checkpoint. Um, but uh, but yeah, the first story was about this. Uh, the interview with Logitech CEO Hen- Henneke Haneke Haneke Faber yeah uh, talking about this idea of a forever mouse now to be clear mm-hmm. this is not a product that Logitech is launching no this is something their innovation center ha- is this dreaming is, of th- yeah this is a is something that they have the idea that this could be a thing mm. Um, I think it's important from this point of view, though, because when you think of a forever something, mm. right? Like, I mean, we think of like, oh, forever chemicals. I mean, there's that. You know, that doesn't sound good at all anymore. Um, forever 21. Yeah, the yeah, it doesn't sound good either. Uh, but the idea of like a forever mouse, I'm like, okay, so it's a mouse that I can use forever. And, I'm, and you start to have that sense of like, oh, this is a, this is something, this sounds like a good thing. I go find the mouse that I want to use. I pay probably a lot of money for it. But now it's like that is the, that is the mousing peripheral I use on my computer. And I've had like four or five mice over the years. Mm. So I understand that idea of like once you find one you like, when that one breaks and you can't buy it anymore, the pain of now I have to go find another one. I assume the forever mouse is not for me because I am a casual mouse user. Mm. I prefer keyboard shortcuts. Oh, there you go. The This is the mouse we held up during the thing, by the way. This is actually not like a super simple mouse. It's got like a couple side buttons and a... Uh, Fancy light. The uh, It's got a light. It's got the um, buttons to like increase and decrease the um, sensitivity. Mm. But uh, yeah, that basic... For for whatever reason, maybe it's from because of my, you know, Mac background. But mm-hmm. 
I my sort of preferred mice tend to be somewhat an odd shaped. Like I yeah. the one the mouse I use at home is like a a, a Microsoft wireless mouse, but it's like one other sort of portable one, so it's like quite oh, yeah. small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a um, after uh, the last mouse. And of course, I, I used the mighty mouse for a long time. The oh, flat yeah. style. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the la the last mouse I bought for myself for home was a was the Logitech Couch Mouse, which is mm -hmm. the one where it's perfectly sealed on the bottom, so that you can actually use it on a fabric surface, so it doesn't mm -hmm. actually oh, pick okay. up threads and shit. It and doesn't get to come the inside. with a couch. Got no, it. but you can you could they're like the whole idea was that you could use it on your couch because it would it can it can it's very smooth scrolling over basically any sort of like. Like um, over a fabric surface, and it's very good at detecting I mean, uh, I've difference. But it was cheap. Definitely mm -hmm. done my share of you know leg mouse. Yeah, right. So <laughs> yeah, I don't. I know mine's it's and it's wireless and it's in a box somewhere and it was a good mouse and I'm a, and I mean I've had better. I've had mice I like better, but the so the problem though stems from as the dis, as the destruction as the conversation between her and Nile Patel, who was hosting the Decoder podcast. This was all on, is that. There, oh, it's a. She's describing it as a nice, not super expensive mouse. Right. And I'm okay. like, a but also, CEO should not be. And also comparing it to like a watch. Yes, and that's the thing that gets me right. That it's like it's a nice, not super expensive it, watch. And I'm like, a nice, not super expensive watch is still about five thousand dollars. I need to know what the watch comparison is more accurately because I don't wear mice on my wrists. So mm. if you if you were gonna say to somebody about a watch that you could keep forever. Like one that you would that you would keep forever, something that's like heirloom quality, the kind of thing that you could pass down from okay. person to person. Uh, You're those are generally really expensive. They start at about a thousand bucks, and even then, it's not that's not that like that's not that you know. Oh, I want to be able to pass it on to my kids, kind of idea. It's start when you start to get into those the realm of like three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollar watches um, by big names, you know, like, um, and they're usually mechanical watches and they usually need a service every several years. I mean, I watch a lot of wrist, wristwatch revival. I'm sure some of you guys do too. <laughs> Marshall's very cool. Um, and, but watching the whole thing and where he's like, yeah, you know, you need to get your watch serviced every five years or so. If you got a mechanical watch, this is kind of the, the, the problem of owning one. Um, and so when people say a nice, not super expensive watch, the first thing I think is that I don't think a Swatch watch, which is a nice Swiss made watch, but it's still a quartz movement, battery powered watch. And you know, those were meant to be a mass market thing. Hmm. It, the description of this, I'm like, is this supposed to be a mass market thing? Is that what you're saying? Is that it should be a $200 mouse? Because if it is, we already have $150 mice. Like this, if it's a $50 more to say now you have a mouse you can use for the next 10 to 15 to 20 years or forever, then why why would you say that? Why Because you're putting yourself at a business at that point. Mm. So, I don't know, my digital Timex still runs really well. Mm -hmm. And it's from the 90s. Mm -hmm. The, uh, now they, um, uh, yeah, and I mean, there's there, there's different, like I saw a thing the other day that was, you know, a, a, a developer talking about somebody had showed him, uh, you know, his he was streaming, I think. And so like his chat showed him a picture of like a new mouse from, it might have even been from Logitech. Okay. That, you know, it's one of these mice that like looks like, uh, you know, the Batmobile from the Christopher Nolan Bat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, where it's got like all these weird like surf plates, surfaces. Like cages and, and like freaking, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, no, no. You're gonna get so much like hand goo <laughs> in those yeah. you know, stuff. You just wait, you know. wait. No, that's a good point. You touch mice with your hands. Does that mean that every time you use this um, hypothetical luxury hand me down to your children for generations upon generations of mouse? Yeah. Uh, that you have to wear gloves every time you touch it. Well, I mean, having like well, most people with watches, you know, you get them serviced, you get them cleaned at the same time. So yeah, it's gonna have that thing where it's it's like the 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 back yes. of the mouse is actually gonna be like worn in. worn in. It's gonna be like fitted to your palm, which is where like because the conversation about this, what I think is interesting, is that you could build you could build a nice luxury mouse out of a a, a nice sustainable piece of wood, you know, that's quite light. It, and if that if you've polished it nicely and whatever, like if you sand it down nicely and you polish it down nicely and everything else, it's like, yeah, as you use the mouse, especially if it's like, if it hasn't been sealed with polyurethane or whatever, um, over time your hand oils are going to basically like lubricate 
the surface of that thing and it's going to get stained and it's going to color but that's what we call patina <laughs> when you're when you're a collector of things you don't call it that it's all stained and gross you call it a patina uh, but you people do that with leather right like people get iPhone cases that they keep on their iPhone that until the iPhone changes size it's like you keep an iPhone case for like two or three editions of your iPhone or for the three years that you have your one iPhone and it develops a patina as well and people like that do they I think they're full of lies Yes, it's, it's like having a wallet that's made of leather, right? That's right. like you get to know it after a while. It becomes yours. As somebody that Full of lies. I have learned, apparently I have... Uh, Corrosive hand oils? Somewhat, somewhat uh, uh, acidic things. Like, to the, like my, uh, you know, my laptop, the palm rests mm -hmm. on my... When I had a laptop, like the 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 aluminum was being eaten away mm. <laughs> all right well on the bomb rest yeah so what we've learned today is that paul's one of those new meta humans yeah uh and uh, he can't be eaten by large birds because yeah, his poisonous wow. skin will keep him safe Qu yeah Qu my, number six yeah this is you i this is actually it's better now that's good uh, i have different um things now but it's starting to happen a little bit too but my uh i've always had a problem with my glasses the the arms the, of my the the little plastic things in the arms of my glasses. I'm gonna call them aglets just, in this case. Yeah, just just disintegrate after a while. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, shout out to the Verge because for for you know not only doing this but uh, they've got a very they've got a full transcript which is great. Um, and I just wanted to 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 give you a quick thing of the the the, the sort of relevant part of the conversation here. They're uh, so, you know, they, they're talking about like, you know, a Rolex. Imagine it's like your Rolex and saying, yeah, but it's like, you know, Rolex. Uh, your yeah. Rolex, everybody. But, but the Rolex like, on your wrist right now. Oh, but but, right, but it's right, like, right. you know, Rolex doesn't necessarily have to like deploy software updates. No. And stuff like that, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's, I mean, there's they could. Have they tried? Um, <laughs> that, the, would take, but, that would take their thing. Uh, so you know they're, they're talking about um, uh, it certainly helped with it, the 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 interviewer says well but certainly helped with sustainability. I mean there are two ways people have traditionally monetized hardware over time: subscription fees and advertising. Is there a third way that I don't know about that you're thinking of, that you're thinking of? I yeah. give you a lot of money once. And so and the response is no. The third way is the traditional model of we innovate and you have to upgrade. That's the current model. <laughs> innovate, yeah. Uh, but of course, the problem is, mice. You know, again, we got the the ones that look like a Batmobile or whatever. Yeah. Or we, you know, we we invented the two buttons by the by the thumb. thumb Those yeah. are pretty common. We've these invented days. RGB lights to go on the bottom of the thing. Yeah. But but you know, the the innovation space for mice is not that big. Yeah. Um, so and then you know, saying. Uh, uh, that's definitely the model today. It's not a bad model, especially since we're continuing to design for more sustainable products and continuing to recycle and refurbish products. All that is good. Um, but I'm intrigued by a forever mouse or a forever video conferencing s solution. This is something they actually do. that's Logitech, yeah. Um, where you just update your software and you create a business model around that. And then the, the interviewer, the next question is, I'm going to ask this very directly. Can you envision a subscription mouse? Possibly. And that would be the forever mouse? Yeah. yeah. So That's you would, the other side of this. I like this. So you would pay a subscription for software updates to your mouse? Yeah. And you never have to worry about it again, which is not unlike our video conferencing services today. The next question. But it's a mouse. <laughs> but it's a mouse, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, tone has a lot to do with that as well. I just, I love when the question is yeah, just like... A statement. It's like, that's not, that was that a question? No. Also, the problem with that is we can't get, for example, we deal with a lot of video around here, right? We can't get software updates for our Blackmagic cameras that we operate in these places as well. We can't get software updates that make them into 4K cameras. Right. That's the thing, is that like saying to her that's like like you pay a subscription for software updates to your mouse and then they say, Yeah, and you never have to worry about it again. No, because if I had to pay for a subscription if I had to pay for a subscription for my ball mouse, 
it doesn't magically next year become an optical mouse. Right. Not unless they want to mail me out a thing now, that, that screws into the bottom and turns it into an optical mouse. Now, I strongly believe that the software for the Black Magic cameras could be updated to make them more functional. Yeah. Without changing the hardware. Absolutely. And but that's yes. what you hope, right? Is but yes, at a, certain, that... at a certain point, you are limited by the hardware. Yeah. And I think but that's... But what update do you make to a mouse? Well, that's the, the, well I mean, I mean, I guess there's... Well, there's so a few. There's compatibility ones, obviously. Well, okay, sure. Yeah. But also, uh, I mean, I guess the other updates would be like... Does it make it faster? It would be like, uh, you know, special macros and stuff, I guess. And that's but, about I it. I mean, realistically, yeah, it shouldn't be much. No. Which is... I mean, and Logitech is already sort of at the forefront of uh, forcing you to install bullshit to make their systems work. Like, yeah, I you know we use uh, I've got a Logitech keyboard in Studio C, um, and in order to use the G keys, like it's got it's got like the regular keys and then it's got just like a set of like extra macro keys. Yeah, you have to install the Logitech software yes we also have uh and we occasionally use uh logitech um uh webcams mm -hmm. uh and in order to make that work you have to install the logitech webcam software right at some point in the last then those used to be two different things right. at some point they were like what we'll do we'll come we'll make it all it's like logitech g Suite or something. Yeah, we'll make that all one thing. Which the now the problem with that is they did that, and then you inst so you install this now third program, mm -hmm. which uninstalls the other two programs, but doesn't actually support the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So it like uninstalled, and now you like, now you can't really use the old software that worked, and now you've got the new software. That doesn't work with the, it's. Yeah, they're making great strides towards the forever keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is, if 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 your innovation is break the thing on purpose so that I have to pay you money to keep it working, I'm not sure that's innovation. That's already been innovated, right? We yeah, already... we made we pointed that out at the end of the story with yeah. the HP printer, because yeah. um, now most printers. Uh, have to scan your ink and you can't refill the cartridges properly without a workaround or fun fun even more fun the uh if the ink cartridge decides that it's expired yep uh mm. it'll just not work we had that happen yeah, already yeah we ran yeah, yeah we ran yeah. into that yeah so there's uh what i think when it comes to like i think there's probably room in the market for an enthusiast type of because i mean there is there is a whole market for a small a comparatively small group of people who make mechanical keyboards, right? And they make their own from scratch. And there's a whole like, you know, enthusiast group and that kind of thing, which then the enthusiast stuff also pushes uh, people in the more mass market areas to be like, well, we better mm -hmm. start thinking about trying to appeal to the people who want to get into that, but they don't want to build their own keyboard from scratch kind of idea. That that exists. And, and so I'm like, surely there's got to be people out there who are like, I want to build... A better mouse i want to build a mouse that i know will last me the test of time and that can be like a very me kind of thing um and whether they are going to build cases out of wood or they're going to machine all the parts inside out of aluminum so they're actually like they last longer than some things nylon lasts longer than aluminum in some case though so now uh i'm actually on the uh the mouth mist for like keychron oh yeah it's yeah. one of the big um sort of uh high-end keyboard or sort of um fancy keyboard companies yeah i i did it i backed a kickstarter up there so i got but um they are actually they i just saw that they just recently they're putting out a mouse um and the buttons are actually they're actually keycaps ah. like they, they're literally like the, the mounts and so you can you know put in whatever tension keycaps you want and do all this stuff that's a cool <laughs> idea <laughs> i don't know if that's a good idea like for i don't know if that's actually comfortable for a mouse right but, you know, it's an interesting idea, and having it replaceable, and because I mean that that's that's obviously like that's the real forever mouse, right? Is if you made it in such a way that it could be that it's got sort of you know basic sort of the equivalent of the like the um, uh, what are the the lap the laptop folks the 
found, not fr fr not foundation uh, uh, framework framework yeah sort of the equivalent of that like make it with sort of commodity I guess framework isn't commodity parts but yeah. like but make the mouse with sort of as much sort of commodity parts parts that will be available possibly even after you as a company are gone yeah um, you know let me buy let me buy a hundred dollar kit to assemble my mouse from scratch with a bunch of base level parts. And then as time goes on, be like, oh, we've, we're releasing a new, we're releasing a new um, top for it that has this form factor. And then you can, that means you can plug or, all the stuff into that that you already have in your old mouse. Or I want to take the, the optical part, the LED opticals uh, uh, out of my um, thing and install uh, the laser components instead. Or I want to do this or I want to do that. So, I mean, yeah. one of the things, you know, I mentioned that I'm using a, the Microsoft wireless portable mouse. One of the reasons why I use that mouse at home not the only reason, but one of the reasons is that um, its click is almost entirely silent. Mm. Like it doesn't, yeah, doesn't uh, make any noise. Um, which is um, when uh, you know when I'm running a stream from home. Yeah, I don't want me and same thing. Like I don't. I use a. Uh, in fact, I use like uh, you know a keyboard that doesn't have it's a non clicky keyboard and stuff yeah. because I don't. I don't want me. My my sense, especially when I'm like hosting the stream, so I'm not even on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to hear my using the keyboard and stuff, um, and uh, and so like you can imagine that like in the same way you have different keycaps, you know, you might want a super clicky mouse, you might want a less clicky mouse, you might want to have different action yeah. for the things, yeah. And but so it, many uh, people have podcasts these days. They still, really, really yeah. need to have like silent keyboards. It still, mice. it still does have tactile feed. So that was I actually um, when we were in Moonbase three, uh, no four. We we were doing uh, at one point when we were doing checkpoint. Mm -hmm. um, this was uh, uh, we were doing it in studio. What was the equivalent of Studio A at the time, mm -hmm. um, and it was just Graham at that point because Kathleen was uh, on maternity leave, in fact. Um, uh, and the way we had to do it in the studio is I would literally be up against the wall in the corner of the room operating the... Yeah, I turning, remember that. ...operating the thing. Um, and people could hear my mouse click as I went through the different graphics and stuff. Right. And I was like... And so I, I attempted to sort of DIY myself a... Uh, a silent mouse right and it worked like you basically you can op you take an old mouse, you can open it up and you put a little basically it's just like a piece of like literally it was just like a piece of electrician tape. yeah um to 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 um Dampen make it so that it doesn't so the click doesn't happen but it turned out to be like r extremely because it also just made it like super mushy and not actually click yeah so it was actually kind of uh unpleasant to use so i didn't end up <laughs> doing it um, but if you, uh, you want, yeah, if you want a silent mouse, you can have a silent mouse that still has uh, tactile feedback. Yeah. 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 It's, anyway. it's just definitely, I feel like th this is worth making fun of because it's, um, from the, from the pro gamer standpoint, people who are like keyboard and mouse doing all that kind of stuff, right? There's already going, there is already a shift where we're seeing people game on controllers and game on touch screens and gaming at the professional level doing those kind right. of things as well. And I'm just like, I know that their Logitech and anybody else who's making peripherals are angling for this, like, what the hell do we do now that not every computer in the world needs a mouse attached to it? What do we do? And I can see this thing of being like, what if we can just get them to sign up for a subscription? And well, I'm like, yep. <laughs> that's the... That's the money making way. Mm -hmm. I should start a subscription where I don't do anything. Yep. I could just write that. I'm not going to do anything, but give me money. You have to do the. You have to do the. Um, you have to do the Internet Witch thing. Which the Internet you, Witch thing. Have you not seen this? There's a. There's Please a, tell me. There's a dude online who's on Etsy. He's like, uh, for like twenty five bucks or whatever. What he'll do is, he, is you send him the thing that that like the thing that's uh, bothering you, uh -huh. and then he like, he writes it on a piece of paper and he tears it into pieces and he burns it. And he charges you forty five dollars for it because yeah, and he says some stuff and he tells you that he said some stuff over top of it and uh, and then therefore he's like cleansed it of uh, whatever. I 
That sounds like a scam. Yeah, it is. That's the whole point. He even literally says on Twitter, like he goes on Twitter and he's like, I do this shit. You would not believe the amount of people who come through to do this. And I'm like, I I don't, the thing is though, is that it's like, but it's not a scam in the sense that they feel better because they've done it and you've done a thing. You performed a service. It's not a scam if you tell the people what you're yeah. Doing. I'm doing this thing for you. And if it makes you feel better, then great. And they're like, yes, it would make me feel if better. You, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't believe in what I'm doing, but you believe in what I'm doing. And sometimes that's what's Like important. if you're doing the thing that you said you're going to do, then I guess it's not a scam. Mm-hmm. Even even if you're, you know, not. Yep. What, what I'm taking away from this is if I offer to uh, write people's things down and burn it in our house, that Beach would be okay with me with fire <laughs> in our house. Uh, on our balcony. Um, we'll set you up a really? nice little like station the to balcony? do it. Yeah, I'll set up a little station for you to do it on the balcony. Anyway. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, they also, uh, one of the other things, in case you, for whatever reason, uh, you know, are um, looking for a... Uh, are, no, if, if, you're, if you're not annoyed at Logitech already... Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, the, uh, they, oh, they've no. also, uh, Christ. Oh, no. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> oh, Paul. Uh, oh, whoops. I didn't actually test whether this was working yet. Well, it's broken. Well, I guess we can't see it. Uh, Logitech is making a, or has the signature AI edition, which is a wireless mouse with a dedicated AI button that launches the load... Oh. The Logi AI prompt builder. Oh well, I wouldn't want to use that. Yeah, log, log, lo, I, I like calling it Logi. Lo, Logi. Yeah, I like Logi as well. It's just a, it's an M750 wireless mouse. Like it's just, mm-hmm. a, it's just, it's, a, it's one of their standard mice. It just has like an extra button. It's just got an extra button in it, so you can activate the AI thing. That Innovation. Again, I'm not using. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, loop, boop, 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 boop. Um, <laughs> Why don't they add an extra button that can turn off the car alarm? Of anybody's cars, that's innovative. <laughs> that, that that would, it be, would be. Yep. <laughs> Just we put one of those. Uh, uh, what, what are those? The the little those those little like uh, wireless um, hacker machines. Uh, oh, the Flipper Zero. Yeah, we Thank just you. like no, put no, a no, Flipper Zero see, inside wanna, the mouse. I don't. I do not want to steal other people's cars. I just want the ability that in the middle of the night, if a car alarm is going off, to turn it off. See, mm. there, perfect. Captain Spam brings it up just like the one keyboard with a dedicated pizza button. That's what I'm calling these from now on. When I see a keyboard or a mouse or anything that has a dedicated button to for AI, I'm going to call it the pizza button. Don't associate it with something good and wholesome. Mm. It's it's it, like pizza. <laughs> um, How dare. Anyway, it so it's mocking. Uh, Graham um, also did a story or did a story about the uh, Elden Ring patch notes. Yeah. Um, which, where uh, you know, games with extensive patch notes are almost always funny, especially when they have this combination of like very specific and very vague updates. So they say, you know, there's there's no kidding. I believe. Almost every single uh, uh, whatever spirit that you can summon um, had this uh, will no longer stagger as easily as like okay. one of their um, as like the update. So there was just this like like four pages of the heading will no longer stagger, stagger as easily. Heading will no longer stagger like just over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and then there's like a bunch of like minor things. There's this okay cancel or okay cancel or yes no prompt okay. that is now defaulted to yes rather than defaulted, to get, which is this what what Graham was talking about being that there's this uh, it's a huge quality of life improvement. Yeah, because as as Beej, as a person who plays a lot of uh, Souls like games, I'm sure you already know that when you try to summon a monster, it brings up a menu. Uh, but it doesn't pause the game it's, when the menu is brought up. It just keeps playing. It's uh, when you, it's trying to. It's the it's resummoning your horse. When your horse as, is when your horse dies, you have to resummon it. And it's like, are you sure you want to do that? And then it defaults to cancel. And oh, so yeah. you have to. It's just you have to go boom left dunk. 
As, but you sometimes have to do it in the middle of a fight. As a problem. player of the equivalent to Elden Ring gaming experience, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, mm. they <laughs> whenever they do an update, they reorganize all of the uh, dialogue options so that when you're like, I need to, I need to verify a thing, or I need to ask to go into a different part of the dialogue process. Uh, they decide that, oh, well, there's an event on, so we're going to make that the default option. I'm like, I've already participated in the event today. I don't need to ask everybody about Wait. the f fucking event again. Yeah, Beach is very uh, very up on the UI uh, mm. dialogue trees of video games. He also consistently complained a bit about the way Animal Crossing New Horizons did theirs. Oh, God. I think everyone had a problem, though. Yeah, no, of, everyone did. Buying but... things from Sahara and all that is like, it's always a... If I walked up to a camel with a bunch of rugs on its back and I said, I want to buy all of those rugs, they'd be like... And the camel was like, no, but what I will do is I will have a conversation with you one at a time to sell you an individual rug every single time and act surprised when it sounds like you want to buy another rug. Mm. And I'm like, just let me buy all of them? Like, no, no. I don't know what shopping cart software is. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> uh, speaking of Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Oh, yeah? You know Hello Kitty's a little girl, right? Yes, not an actual not, kitty. Not a cat. Yeah, Kitty never Chan has is been. a girl. Uh, and never, never has been. Mm -hmm. Never has been. Despite There's always been all a girl. evidence to the contrary. Isn't that great? So, yeah, I love yeah. it. So, well, it's I, Hello Kitty, or rather Kitty Chan, has a pet cat, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So it it's, would be a, weird. it's a fun piece of trivia to know because once you know it, you will notice every single time where uh, people in casual news will realize that and it'll be a slow news week for them and, and they'll, they'll bring, bring it up. up like once every couple of years. So great. And it's like not only, yeah, it's like that That doesn't make any sense, but okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's from England. Yeah. Uh, she's British. Yeah, because her parents are British, Mary and George White. Yep. Her name, her canonical name is Kitty White. Yep. Has a twin sister. Anyway, let's yeah. let's go back about <laughs> this. Um, so uh, my, my actually my favorite thing about uh, I saw you know people because um, I you know I got some nice screenshots of posts from 2020 on or is it 2022 I guess okay. when 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 Elden Ring came out people complaining on Reddit about the 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 dialogue box. Ah. Um, but then I when I was looking at that I also saw there's posts like. New post, people not complaining, but people being like, my muscle memory for when a dialogue pops up, I do, you know, left, okay, yeah, is now so bad that now that they fixed it, I can't, I'm canceling out of it. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> Which I think also then, though, is a, it's a very telling thing about the development of AI or sorry, of UI. Oh, okay. very telling. Yes, That's please. what I want to talk about is that the, the development of UI. Is, is that that should be a thing that um, it should be much more careful discussion, right? It's mm. like if you're gonna if you're gonna be like I need to summon my horse, and it's gonna require you to have a dialogue box to do it, then you need to you need to have a thing you, like there needs to be a conversation about like okay when we do this, what's the actual result we want to I mean, see people have? I mean maybe maybe it's one of those things where they're like. When we made the game, we didn't realize people were going to get their horses killed so often. Yeah, maybe. You guys are monsters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a it's a it's the default thing you want on most other systems to not say yes automatically to something. Yeah, like when Link summons his right. horse in, in in Breath of the Wild. He, like you hit the button to whistle, right? That's just what happens. You hit the button, he whistles, and the horse is on its way. That's if that's the, yeah. If the sure. horse is near enough to you, you hear you, obviously. But it's like, but that is the intended result. And I'm like in Elden Ring, if you're walking along and you want to summon your horse and you hit the button to do it, is then it, well, th this is only if you're. So the idea is that this is only if, if the horse is, has died oh. and you want to resummon it. Which expends some resources, so you, oh, so it's like, are you sure you want to I see. spend the resources? Yeah. Okay, to go? Sorry. So there, there's some reasoning there mm -hmm. that to double check it, but still. Um, and then of course, when a website pops up with a dialog box and automatically has you saying yes to a thing that you don't want to say yes to, we don't like that. It's true. It's it's true. It's, it's why I like the uh, the positive acknowledgement being more of a. I want to. I want to. If I want to summon my horse, like resummon and spend these flasks, it's like, well, if I have to hold down the A button to do it, like rather than just going A and then and then and yeah, maybe spend flasks and do it, it's like just hold have down like the a, a hold it down and then show it filling up and be like, oh yeah, so I give you a chance. Yeah, that would be a good way. to Except do it. Yeah. if this is a game that doesn't pause you for you doing things, 
is that option available? Well, I mean, like in play, I played a lot of Saints Row uh, recently, and that's when you have to revive your homie. It's like you have to go up to your homie and you have to hold down the button for three seconds. Mm-hmm. I don't get to pause to revive my homie. I have to I have to summon the horse off the ground. In uh, a lot of ways, your homie is like a horse. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you also revive don't have homie, like ten foot. Horse gods or maidens or whatever it is you fight at Elden Ring yeah. slamming ball sacks yeah. at you or whatever I just whatever don't know why you would need to ha- be summoning your horse in the middle of that kind of adventure. To run though? away. I guess maybe. Uh, anyway. Uh, and then as I said, you know, the very specific and then uh, certain fixed a bug that caused certain skills to perform differently than expected under certain circumstances. Mm. <laughs> Which you know, Elden well, Ring. Luck. I was like, you know, Elden Ring developers, uh, big same. You know, <laughs> sometimes you, my skills don't operate the way I, they different. They operate differently than I expect under I mean, certain circumstances. I need, I need to ask: Do they actually know what they fixed, or did they just introduce a new bug and they're like, "Oh, it did something"? So a little, well, guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. I think you only have so many characters to write out your bug report, and yeah. uh, if you have to explain in depth. Well, it's, or there's like a whole bunch of stuff that they're fake. I don't know. Yeah, yeah hundreds things. of thousands of little fixes. I get a little grumpy on like when I do like, a, you know, I have to, I like all my iOS updates have queued up and all of the uh, like update notes are just like. Bug min- fixes and performance improvements. Yeah, yeah, bug fixes and performance improvements. I'm like, with all the bug fixes and performance improvements, this this app should be running light speed at mm-hmm. this point. It's like the it's like Nintendo Live always makes fun of the Nintendo Switch well, updates. Well, because their updates are always for, for stability. Yeah, unprecedented levels of stability this yeah. time. Yeah, it's, it's even like, more mm-hmm. stable than it was before. Yeah. If such a thing all, is possible, all of their updates are always for stability, and yeah. then you see if anyone can actually track figure down out. what if what any of the actual updates are, if there uh, are any. All right. Well, uh, there's also this uh, thing about um, Mario Sonic at the Olympics. Um, and, no, no, they're not there anymore. And they're not. Mario, Sonic, Mario and Sonic aren't at the Olympics. Yeah. Um, and some the com- uh, I saw a comment on this this video on YouTube that brought brought up the very good point that why is this a story now? Mm-hmm. Presumably, we knew that there wasn't going to be a Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Like a while ago. Yeah, a year or so ago. Because nobody was developing it. Yeah. It's not a big surprise. Well, yeah. Because the story is, I mean, for one thing, it popped up because uh, a person... Because they finally got somebody on like on the record yeah, to talk got, about Yeah, got to it. say something for once. So that that's going to be part of the reason why. The other part of the reason would be like, because the Olympics is now, and so this is like a thing people think about now. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, lots of reasons why stories kind of pop up when it feels like why 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 this now. I know there's a second half to this that has to do with what actually came up for like a little right. thing, but as far as Mario and Sonic doing a thing, I'm like, well, if they're free now to participate in any sort of other um, meetup of athletes having having like uh, doing Olympics and that kind of like doing doing sporting events, mm. the World Championships, like the Worlds, are a thing. And they could do that, right? If people are like, I want to continue to make a Mario and Sonic doing sports game. It's like, well, you could probably go get the Worlds quite cheap compared to getting the Olympics I understand that uh, logo. when it comes to the Olympics, you spend a lot of time training and doing all of that for uh, for the event. And then you have the event itself, which takes up a lot of your time. Mm-hmm. But given the rate that Sonic puts out video games, he might just want to take a break. There's mm-hmm. that too, yeah. He might not want I'm, to fill his schedule all of a sudden. Mario I don't know about Sonic Mario. At the Invictus games. Mario kind of seems like he he probably could take a break too. He's had too many jobs, maybe. But like, I mean, I do feel. Uh, I mean, it does feel a little weird to have Sonic at the Olympics in the you know track and field events. Like he's got to have an unfair advantage. How do you mm-hmm. feel about the uh, the games that included things like horse sports? So technically, you have animals riding animals. How do you feel about those ones? Fine. I mean, you know. As a human, I know I'm also an animal. Yeah, humans are animals. That's fine. <laughs> so you're okay I... with a hedgehog riding a horse? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are I you mean, okay it, with Sonic about, kissing a human? In like Sonic yeah. and the Black Knight, didn't he ride a horse around because he was like on um, night? Oh, night I have armor? no idea. All I, I, I think that's the one he kissed where he, a girl or something. I think that's something. the one where he kissed a girl, too. So he was, he was experimenting with all kinds of things in that one is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I really actually think it would be it would be cool if whoever was doing because I have no idea who actually does the Mario and Sonic games if they actually were like f it we're getting a different license from a different because the World Championships like people pe- the worlds were at Edmonton one year when I was living there and I was like what the fuck are these things and then you <laughs> find out the worlds as everyone was kept referring to them as the worlds are like they're they're one of the biggest deals right and if you don't know if all you do is you know the olympics it's like oh yeah every four years everybody gets together and then they they draw names out of a hat and that guy has to go swim or some shit like that right that's kind of how you approach the pros like how do you know who's going to be good at this well they go to regionals and they go to nationals and then they wait for three more years and they go it's like no the worlds exist because they there's people need time to actually also compete and do other things and I like that idea of yeah, s- sign them up for other sporting events that are just as big a deal, right? The the I don't know. I felt like the subtext mm-hmm. in this in, you know this interview. Um, in some ways, it felt like the subtext was like, eh. like yeah. <laughs> like who cares? The, it was one of the like Marion Sonic in the Olympics. You know, they kept doing it, and it was from what I understand, like kind of sort of fine and not terribly exciting to gamers maybe well, not terribly exciting based but on you know some of the comments i've seen the later games end up just being a bunch of button mashing or something yeah uh, but i think some of the early entries might and have they, been okay or good they, or something like that and they get a lot of um you know they they having the license and stuff gets them far and they've got you know both mario and sonic and so you know there, there's a lot of sort of tie-in things that people you know people might like and things but it's not like a huge thing so i don't know i got the impression i mean the the the, this interview was with a a somebody who had worked on a bunch of them but is no longer with ism the development company Mm. um but i it felt the impression i got was was see it felt like sort of we didn't really fight that hard for it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I like, I like, to, I like to think that since uh, the other part of that is like the IOC was more interested in like NFT games and stuff. Yeah, that, because we... That, right. that they were like, we don't really do those. Because, so, I mean, there's this interesting idea. Like, you know, we talked extensively last week and I guess almost the week before, you know, the Olympic esports thing. Right. And then it's sort of, and then there's also like the Olympics is not just, you know, there's not just Marion Sonic Olympics, but the Olympics is sort of sim, sort of officially has this uh, grift of their own. Well, has has this mobile game that oh, has thank you. Yes. Uh, whatever, 12 different sports and stuff in it, right? And, you know, when we were talking about the esports thing, there was this idea that. Uh, you know, there, a lot of the sports that they were doing were sort of the digital versions of uh, of existing sports, mm-hmm. which is sort of, and so it's sort of, it's like, wait a minute, like if that's what you want, which, you know, talked about, I sort of disagree with as the concept for the e- esports, but if yeah. that's what you want, yeah, and especially since they were using games like, you know, where they were using that like tic tac bow and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. It was like, if that's what, couldn't you just make the game that you're going to do the esports thing with Mm -hmm. and just like make it however you want it and just like then you have full control like yeah it seems like that would be the thing but anyway um so they're and they they have yeah an, an nft an nft of the pin that you can actually like you can actually get the pin of the little mascots but then you with the in the game you can get an nft of the pin and I don't. I just. Why? Yeah. I mean, that's the answer. That's the question I mean, to most. For it's about kind of most the, it's, it's the question I have towards every time I see the 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 little hat dudes as well. It's just why. But I, I mean, as Olympic mascots go, they they're not the worst. Yeah, they're not the worst. They're they're kind of cute. I just I don't know. They make me think of Smurfs or something, and I don't know that I like it. I, you know, I I saw them labeled as um, uh, parts of anatomy, and I was like, oh, that makes a lot more sense. I like them a lot more now, but that's fine. <laughs> it's it. What this means is that for whatever the winter games, I have no idea where they're going to be, uh, but the winter games will then have a. Uh, uh, because the IOC is just always behind on the grift. 
And, the, and so they're like, we wanted a game that would capture the zeitgeist of what's going on. And we were told that it's NFTs. Right. And so I'm sure that that means that by the, uh, in, in two years when the, when the Olympic, the Winter Olympics uh, comes about, that we will have a game that is based on AI somehow. Well, that will be the, the grift that they will be involved I mean, in at that point. So. If you can get the IOC to be into NFTs, all you're doing, I think, at that moment is, uh, is getting rid of your NFT stash on a... On a different grifter. I mean, it'd be great if they were going around buying them up from people, I think, at that point. Because, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, I'm not a... Uh, I, it's nice to hear about, you know, hey, a bunch of a bunch of people from my country did really, really well, and they swam really well, and, and, uh, and won a bunch of gold medals. And I'm like, that's awesome. I get real excited about that. Uh, in the sense that I'm like, they did really well and good for them. You know, like, so, that's fantastic. But I hate that it's married to this thing that just kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I I don't. I don't care about any of it. Yeah, the only fair. reason I know about any of it is because um, Graham keeps like, putting the TV on in the office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Graham and Kathleen are super into... Yeah, uh, I yeah. Just, I... If that wasn't going on here, and, and because I don't really look at YouTube that much from a from a more consumer side of things, I actually would be just like, oh, the Olympics is on, huh? We we watched is it the done yet? We I mean, how long does it last? CBC Sports is like being bumped up in my YouTube feed, um, and there was we did sure. watch that one thing of the um, Felix. I forget his last name. I'm gonna say Levan. Uh, from Canada, who was doing an, uh, who's doing a, a bar routine, and uh, and then his uh, yeah, that was horrifying. His yeah, grip I don't snapped. really want to watch that. And it was just like, again. oh Jesus! And he got to go up and do it again. That's it was, what I really want to yeah. watch: a human being fling themselves into the air and then lose it and face plant right into a it was, thing. Yeah, it was brutal, and I was like, oh, that you know, that was very interesting to watch. Definitely. <laughs> mm. <sighs> so yeah. Oh, here they are. We can't show anyone. Yeah, but, because it's uh, an NFT. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. no, because the. <laughs> I love also though that like. You know, as a as a as a uh, uh, somebody who's done a lot of work in you know, tech support and IT and stuff. Mm -hmm. I love that this you know the, uh, in there, there's a screenshot of this on the um, uh, on the story, but you know the the thing about the, um, the NFT. So it's you know the. Paris 2024 mascot NFT digital pins. Join the excitement with the of the Olympic Games Paris 2024 with Enway's officially licensed commemorative Paris 2024 NFT digital pins collection. And so it's like, yeah, you're great. You're going to get this digital pin. Well, how do you get this digital pin? It's so easy. You can claim a legendary or epic pin showcasing the Paris 2024 mascot holding a flag and waving. You can add these digital gems to your collection through Magic Eden's friendly NFT marketplace as part of Coinbase's on-chain summer event. Be sure to have an ETH L2 base supported wallet to secure yours today. It's so easy. <laughs> wow. Also, they're not pins. They're images. So that's like... Three yeah. or four different, like third-party companies that you have to coordinate with in yeah. order to get this thing working. I could make you an illegal pin of that image very easily, much more easily than right I think click, going download in. image. I've, I've already, I've already <laughs> done it because I now know what they look like. No, so I still have a button here. maker. Oh, oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, that'd be really funny. <laughs> um, boop, 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 boop. And then uh, finally, um, well, not. Finally, in the episode checkpoint, um, there's this whole uh, thing about um, Bungie laying off a big chunk of their workers. Yeah. Which is. Bungie, Bungie, Bungie. So, I, this is. Uh, Cameron wrote this story. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I, you know, he, he obviously we wanted to uh, talk, about, talk about this. And this, so, this is something that we've sort of. We've talked about a little bit in the past um, is that. As a general policy, we don't usually talk about uh, downer um, news. Well, not even downer news, but studios closing or mm. layoffs. Yeah. One, we it's don't usually want to not make that fun of them. Usually. Yeah. You one, it's usually not that um, like uh, newsworthy. Unfortunately, mm. they're 
and there isn't like that much interesting to say about it other than this sucks. Yeah. Um, and you know, we don't want to, you know, we, we we're trying to have, make, you know, jokes and things, which yeah. it's hard to do. To be clear, I, we don't want to make fun of the people who are getting laid off. We want to make right. fun of the people who are assholes. And that that's always been our policy on a checkpoint. Yeah. I've noticed in the past year or year? two, uh-huh. year or two, uh, that we have reported on more uh, layoffs and closures. Um, and I think, I mean, I think that's possibly partially because they've become uh, commonplace, uh, even yeah. even more common. But also uh, because, you know, when we were when we, you know, you don't basically you usually don't want to be reported on on checkpoint. Yeah. <laughs> Like the reason why we report on something is because, you know, people being laid off is sad, but not that unusual. But it's it's when it the layoff or the closure happens in a particularly egregious way. Yeah. In a way that we feel like we can sort of highlight. Yeah. And weirdly, they seem to be doing it in an egregious way a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, and s- we had to make fun of Embracer Group because it was called Embracer Group. Yeah, that one yeah. was hard to kind of goes against the name. You know? Yeah. Uh, so now this is um, so yeah. I mean, the big thing about this was this, um, you know, this letter uh, that uh, Pete Parsons wrote um, a- as the new path for Bungie, um, and uh, talking about the layouts that they're doing, and then they're and, you know, uh, I will say in their defense that uh, they did, you know, uh, find positions for a good chunk of the people. Um, you know, the layoffs were not as bad as they may have all, may have been or make or could have been, I guess. Oh, yeah. About yeah. half of the people that are no longer working at Bungie are being moved over to uh, studios like, and Microsoft to, to, to well uh, or Sony, Sony, Sony rather and Sorry. Stuff. so God I got to keep up it's not as bad as it could be I don't know if that's uh, you know that's not that's not like a huge plus but mm. saying it's, it's not as bad as it could have been but still. I think I think it, it would be one thing if this was like at the beginning of the year and no other layoffs had had occurred right it would be right. like oh uh, some people got laid off but we that some people got moved to this thing and, and whatever. And you'd kind of be like, yeah, okay, blah, blah, blah. But after we've hit like this entire year, every time someone talks about a layoff story, it's like, oh, so we're at, uh, we've we've already exceeded the number of layoffs that have been last year in like, like February, yeah. right? Like, so it's just like another layoff story just makes you go, no. Um, and and if the other... Uh... Uh, you know, and then the the other part that came out about this is that uh, the uh, this um, Pete Parsons uh, uh, has also uh, over the last little while um, in, in the last nine months, which is since they laid off like two hundred people earlier in the year, mm-hmm. um, has uh, acquired uh, millions of dollars worth. Of of uh, really nice cars. How oh, about that? Yeah, um, and thank I guess thankfully for us, uh, it's like the place how we acquired them was something that is like publicly viewable. Mm. So we know all the cars and and how much he spent on them. And there's certainly bring like, a trailer oh yeah, the best vintage that. and classic cars for sale. Yeah, bring a trailer is for that kind of thing definitely. Uh, and so yeah, it was it's just like you know and. and and this is yet again one of these things where uh, a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of the people being fired found out about it from the public uh, posting. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it's just like, see, yeah, I, mm, I kind of so in a way I'm like, this all sucks. I want to say in regards to the car collection thing. That, that I'm like, this is incredibly bad timing because it's like optics wise, it is a terrible thing. 
and then and people talk about oh optics versus reality and stuff like that too. I'm like, yeah, obviously, but it's like, man, if you were gonna buy a bunch of cars, like buy a whole bunch of new things and put in whatever, and then at the same time be like, oh, so I'm firing a bunch of my employees, it does it does ring really hollow. It's like we're having a tough time here. It's like yeah, because it doesn't seem like you're mucking in. You're trying to make a difference here. You're trying. You're trying to get paid the same as like your lowest employee kind of thing to be like. We need to cut. We need to make. Some I mean, even if he here. didn't buy all those cars, he, that probably wouldn't have yeah. stopped people from getting. I do, laid I do off. have that thing of I guess like I wouldn't want anyone to interfere with me saying what I can spend my paycheck on, and ultimately, you know, a guy like that, he's not just going to the bank account and being like, "Give me all the money for Bungie," because Bungie's owned by Sony, right? He's getting a paycheck from it's where true. he's collecting it's, a paycheck from. It's not a one to one. Yeah, and it's like yeah, it, I know that those things are not related, but it certainly the feeling of it is what's rough right it's like letting letting that happen it's like i know that he should be allowed to spend whatever he wants to spend his money that he earned for running this company sure whatever but it definitely does highlight the disparity yeah and i think that's more of the the thing is like if you've been laid off and you and you're looking at you, your boss's boss's boss spending yeah. millions of bucks on cars it's like I don't feel like I was respected around here because I don't feel like we're all a part of the same process. Mm -hmm. That is very tough. So the yeah. uh, I like in the in the the Twitter thread X thread. Uh, uh, some people <laughs> I think it. Wow, you've got really great taste in cars. <laughs> it's a shame you can't put that passion into being a CEO. <laughs> a lot of people are really complimentary about his car choices. I guess, yeah. All right. I mean, I wouldn't mind having a look. Maybe I can say something nice or not, but I mean, it's it's all subjective. Uh, Current Toy had an interesting point a while ago, which is the thing to do if you want to see when the company's actually getting a shit kicking is when does all the actual talent leave as opposed to when are you letting people it's, go, right? Yeah. And... But that put me in mind of an, of an interesting thought that um, the last like really Im like the name that I the last one I can remember for a programmer that has a uh, preternatural skill, the kind of person who is just like exceptionally good at what they did um, and that people were amazed by the leaps and bounds in which they would make a thing is John Carmack of id Software. Right. And that's I mean, that's given my age. But that was like that's the last major person I can remember to be like this guy figured out how to do X, Y and Z things. And he did this and he did that and he gave talks and, and educated a bunch of people and, and those kind of things. And and to me, it's like, yeah, John Carmack should be worth money because he did a whole bunch of really amazing things to push video gaming along in a certain direction. Um, and now you have like I sit and I watch credits go by of all these people who make these video games that I've been finishing recently and, and I'm just like I don't know who any of these people are I don't know who the really good ones are I don't know who the ones who are just kind of like they're putting in their time and they're doing they're doing a good job but they're not like exceptional at their job I don't know if that person who's at the bottom of the list who just started there maybe because they're like further down the list and so they're like oh yeah they get the low billing but it turns out that they're actually really good at what they do and that they're gonna jump ship in three years and go to a different company, or they're right. gonna get fired because they've only been there for whatever, and then they're gonna have a chance to shine at a different company. I mean, you know, um, those kind of things. It's like we never really know I mean, who the really good people no, are. No, and you're not going to because when it comes to PR of a company and the things that go on, they don't bring out the person who's really good at animating wheels. They yeah. give you whoever the person you're supposed to look at and be like, ooh, they're the auteur. They always talk about thing. how what a great job Miyamoto did programming Super Mario 3D World from scratch. It's those kind of fucking people. Well, like, and it's, and it's, and you know, you, you do have people, because uh, I mean, the big sort of AAA games just can't be done by one, one person, person or five people or ten people um, yeah so you do have um you know you do have uh, you know big like uh his name concerned ape uh what i forget what the, the guy started valley his yeah the, the person who did started valley yeah like that is sort of valley um i don't know about it from a technical point of view but just from a an achievement and as an achievement for one person to do i think somebody else did like the music for it or something but effectively everything else like that is a, a an amazing achievement. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can think, and yeah, like you can. There, there are, and Carmack was like, he was developer, but he's also like he also like you know ran id software, right? Like, and he was, he wasn't just like 
some sort of he wasn't just like a grunt developer that no it, no he was like at the top of the yeah. heap of the people who were doing stuff absolutely yeah but but anyway yeah it, yeah people I think there's less there's there's certainly less um, yeah and Lucas Pope so yeah. brought up but um, but I don't think of like a, you know Hideo Kojima gets mentioned and I'm like. Kojima doesn't sit down and program that engine. He doesn't sit down and, and no. do the, you know, and like there's, we always think of the people at the top of the hip as like, I have a vision for a thing and it's like, right. But I think from a programming standpoint, like that's not where the, like people who may, who may have in the past had to use their skills to be a, to, to do some sort of, you know, totally bonkers, uh, programming deal to make it so that this you know a game or a program worked yeah in whatever 8k of memory yeah you know the sort of steve wozniak kind of thing right yes. uh that's just not necessary yeah we look in, at- in the like like you know we use we we've got graphical engines and all this stuff now so like people who have that kind of a brain might be more into just actually doing just like pure math problems and stuff like like the that area of you know, it, it's not sort of that that kind of um, innovation is not, or that's not the area of innovation that is really needed in video games at this point. Yeah, uh, and so it's sort of those people who are into that might be going somewhere else. And now. that's, uh, and I guess that's like because the larger point of there might be a whole bunch of people working for Bungie who are who are very very good at what they do, um, but they might not be like the you know the pluck from the heavens genius kind of thing. And that's great. Um, and <laughs> yes, that's a good, thank you that, Corvus. That's a good post. Yeah. Yeah. There's a tendency among the press to attribute the creation of a game to a single person says war inspector, creator of thief and deus ex it's, and, and that's that the, the idea of, um, we, you might've had, cause the whole idea of like, Oh, we had lightning in a bottle when, when this team was together and they made this amazing piece of, and there might've been like a hundred people on that team and they made this amazing game. And then that studio gets torn apart and turned to other things. And then, uh, people end up in different spots. And then three or four people from that studio who are the bigger names get back together and they reform that studio and everyone gets really excited. They're like, Oh my God, you know, Flurg Studio is back, you know, like Flurg right. did such a great job in these three previous games. It's been 20 years and now Flurg's back. They're going to do amazing. I'm like, no, they won't. No, they won't. Because the team that was there before, everybody working on that stuff was making it happen. And three guys come together and be like, we were all on Flurg and we were doing the amazing Flurg stuff. And it's like, who gives this shit about Flurg at this point? Three quarters of your team is working for most of the rest of the industry at this point. And maybe they're getting shit on because they were part of Flurg in the past, but they're not like doing the Flurg things. They're just doing like this, the shit that you do to get a job to get a pension so you can retire in like in another 10 yeah. years. I don't that was fun, by believe the way. anyone can do anything alone. I know, I know there's Hashtag like, just flirt I know there's like, there's going to be like, Oh, this person who did everything and maybe, yeah, maybe they wrote and they, they did animations and they Designed did the whole the story and, and they were able to program the whole thing and it took them a very long time to do it. And yeah, but in the end they still had to probably go to a publisher and other people who did the marketing and other things because it's it's like watching a person do a one man show on on a stage and be like ah they did everything yeah and it's like sure so I guess we'll just pretend the, the lighting person wasn't there that day yeah the right. person who put who, the music together yeah yeah the you know the people who are running the stage yeah it's like mm hmm I always thought I remember I it's, I've seen a couple of you know really really nice really really great one man shows and it's always there's like the person and there's like the director. Who's you know a different per? I always thought that's like, you know, I get obviously you understand the director's job. Yeah. But I feel it, it seems like in like a one man show, it's just basically one person bossing another person around. Yeah. yeah it's not right. like one person has the vision of the whole thing and the other person is like just the actor. Yeah. Because they both basically are just like sitting there, like. Have they? But they both have the same amount of information. Yeah, they're just. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it like seems like an odd. I, it's like a lot of stand up that I watch. Right, whenever you watch stand up shows, and it's like there's always somebody who's a director, and sometimes there's co directors because it's like, oh yeah, the the person who's directing this whole the whole everything, and then the co director is the person on stage who's telling the jokes. Mm. You know, I'll see that from, some from time to time too. But it's like, yeah, there's definitely a different but, experience there. 
Uh, yeah, I think I've gotten us way off track. I'm sorry. Mm, well, just, but I know, uh, speaking of hmm. uh, people who, um, you know, because sometimes you, need, you do need help publishing your game. Um, one of the stories that we didn't get into in the actual episode uh, was the um, humble layoffs. Yeah, we, now, we talked sort about of this. talked about it last week on Chill Point because it was it had just like shown up yeah. either the day before late or early that morning. Uh, but there, as a little bit more time has gone on, we've seen that. Uh, we've seen the problems that this is causing for some indie studios. And so this is Humble Games, which is a publishing studio Mm -hmm. that was spun out of Humble Bundle and is not part of the same company. It's also owned by Ziff Davis. Yes. Also, you know, same parent company, but anyway. So this is the whole thing where they got restructured, but the restructuring was that they're not there anymore. Um, So what has come out... So, you know, this happened about a week ago, uh, what has come out now is there's been um, a couple of uh, studios, Squid Shock, um, who's the developers of Bow Path of the Teal Lotus, which is a, a game that's been getting very good reviews, just came out, mm-hmm. um, and Starway Games, um, co- who make uh, Coral Island, mm-hmm. um, have both um, and stuff. So uh, Squid Shock saying uh, the humble news took us completely by surprise and we are now at the difficult situation when it comes to updating the console ports. So the problem apparently is that one of the things that somebody like Humble Games does for, you know, as 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 Heather a was publisher. Saying, as Heather was saying, you know, you make your game, but the process of, you know, you can put it on Steam or whatever, but the process of putting it onto a console is substantially more complicated. It's harder. You have to have people to co- contact, people, there's, w- ways to port it, and um, there's, all those sorts of things. And there's like uh, certification systems mm-hmm. and all these kind of things. And so if you don't know how any of that works, you need someone to work and, on that and for so, you. Yeah, often, that's, often that's what a one publisher, of the, one of the yeah. big things a publisher will do. That's one of the nice things of going to a publisher is that they help you with those things. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, so Coral, Coral Island, uh, Stairway Games, um, saying, uh, to say to console players, switch player, switch backers especially, because mm-hmm. uh, this was a Kickstarter game. Same so we'd like to take uh, say something today. Given that humble humble games recent restructuring leaves the consoles in a place of uncertainty. Uh, to start with, um, we share your frustrations seeing the lack of uh, port for a switch port for Coil Island. That was something that was part of their Kickstarter. Right. Um, uh, over the years, there's a lot we've wanted to say in the spirit of transparency about many different things, but we continue to be unable to do so because of publishing agreements and NDAs we have in place. But the impact of Humboldt Games restructuring on Coral Island remains uncertain for a lot of things relating to the consoles, whether porting or pushing hotfixes, as they are responsible for these platforms. We've been in communication with our lawyer since we found out about the restructuring on social... They found out about it on social media. So this is the other thing, right? Again... You know the people finding out they're fired. In this case, they're people. You know, there's, these are the people finding out when that like your publisher is gone by it being announced on social media. Mm-hmm. So you're not. You know, yeah. you're just as in the dark as everyone else. All your you know your phone numbers are now just going to whatever are disconnected. Like all your contacts are gone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, we have an upcoming hotfix for 1.1 update nearing release for Steam. We have no idea how to get this update out to our other platforms. Uh, we don't have the backend permissions on the console platforms to push updates out. We've only accessed the Steam backend. Because of this, the only thing we can do for Switch players is effective immediately, we're going to offer a key change to the Steam platform um, as long as we are able to. So if you contact them, uh, they will switch your key to a steam key all right so like like that's where we're at here where they're, they're like we mm. we we view and the steam version is the only version that we can actually control right so if we you, have to because like if i was a switch player because that's what i am you know maybe i might be like well i did pay for the game and i do want to see it on switch and if the plan is like at some point we'd like to see it come to switch and we could see it but you might have to wait a few years before that happens 
yeah, then I have to start asking myself, yeah. how long do I actually want to wait to see but this But here's, here's the thing, because the disruption in your development time has been huge because you woke up that day with your plans to maybe have a meeting with someone, maybe work on your game, whatever. Yeah. And you go and you check your socials while you're getting your breakfast ready or whatever it is you do in the morning. And you're like, wait, all the people in the, the group that I talk to are gone? Yeah, I don't have a publisher anymore. Yeah. Because the publishers dissolved essentially. So as a, restructured to nothing. Yeah. As as a as a note, um, so I uh, uh, you know I, I marked a couple of stories that were involved that were talking about this. Um, one from um, GameDeveloper.com, which is a great source for sort of industry things. One from Game Informer, which had some more details about the uh, um, bow. Path of the Teal Lotus. Mm -hmm. uh, I just went to the Game Informer link. Farewell from Game Informer. After 33 years of bringing you the latest news, reviews, and highlights from ever-evolving thing, it is heavy hearts that we announced the closure of Game Informer. Oh, my God. Yeah. As far as I know, that like happened between yesterday and today. Huh. <laughs> my, my, wow. my understanding as well is that Ziff Davis has effectively basically bought out all the UK gaming sites too. So they just... Uh, uh, like so, there's a lot that's going down that's really... So all of uh, the... Very yikes. So any news posts that were Game Informer news posts are now just gone? Is that or right? just a broken link. Wow. I mean, that's... That's a very powerful statement to make to the rest of the world who would have de depended upon this in the first place to be like, hey, guess what? Oh, I don't like this. Wow. That is uh, very unfortunate. Game, think... in Game Informer was uh, an, an excellent informer of That's, games. Uh, there was one, one less was, website that it was you're one of my It was for. one of my go-to places for you know looking for uh, stuff for Checkpoint. News articles for Checkpoint. Yeah. Wow. Um, so that's great. And, and I guess it maybe, maybe people knew about that and it's not breaking news, but it's breaking news for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, let's talk about some stuff. That if you wanted to it. see what uh, people learning about real news in real time look like, you just saw it. Yeah. You don't normally go for that. Man. The open uh, web is going to be such a great thing. Anyway, yeah, yeah, let's let's talk about a few things that we didn't talk about in the actual episode, uh, including. Well, there was that last um, uh, the outro, the uh, oh, right. pixie girl something. Uh, right, Blizzard is uh, thinking of bringing <laughs> back six v six and Overwatch. Oh, okay. Um, which, I hadn't. I wasn't aware that it left, but alas, surprised. Yeah. Uh, they uh, quite some time they, ago. They're, so Overwatch 1 had 6v6, Overwatch yeah. 2 would have 5v5. I did not know that, that there was a difference, sure. Apparently, two less people. Technically. it makes a big difference in the con in the process of, of actually playing the game. Putting a fire team together. Um, and, yeah. 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 Um, and so uh, they thought it was... Um, uh, so they're thinking about bringing it back, um, which was the main piece of news, other than uh, uh, we were making fun of the uh, latest... Um, their latest addition to their roster, uh, who has very, very tight pants. <laughs> and to be fair, yeah. there's a few other... Uh, they make you go faster, I think. There's a few the other, I'm, there's well, a few other female characters in the uh, Overwatch roster that also have pretty tight pants. If, so. you, if, you have, if your pants are tighter, there's less wind resistance. Oh, I see. So, yeah. I've always thought Tracer had very tight pants. As um, and yeah, unfortunately, like I said, the uh, the screen um, uh, the screen thing is not screen cap uh, screen cap thing is not actually working right now. I didn't. They've got the internet. I didn't they test it before it I went online. This is for Juno, the new person. And as Kathleen pointed out uh, in the after show, uh, uh, nope. I didn't. Did that, no, that I, cut, I cut that. Oh, okay. Uh, one of the things um, that we were we were talking about is uh, you know we're. Graham, Graham wrote that and he was like, here's the thing. And, you know, use this clip from the trailer, which is like... Oh, this is the section with the tight pants? The, the, well, this is, it's like this particular section has her like, you know, it's like a back view of her running down the hallway. So it's right. like really uh, obvious. And then when you go to the video and you're like, hmm, which, I wonder where that part is. And then you go to the uh, the thing of like, what are the most, the, the little graph of 
what the most viewed sections are. Yeah. Uh, there's a surprising um, well, maybe lump. Not, maybe not that surprising. You're going to see an interesting lump in the graph. Yeah. Uh, where uh, So it turns out that um, a lot of people were doing um, important news stories mm -hmm. on this topic, I, I would oh, surmise. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean... The, the postulation of what is what are they going to do if this doesn't let Overwatch take like Even do anything tighter over, pants I guess tighter pants I mean you could always concentrate on what Overwatch is infamous for I guess you could turn your company into that um, anyway so uh, a couple other stories a few little things um, Zelda uh, Tears of the Kingdom um, the Figma for um, uh, Ganon, the or no, Ganondorf. Ganondorf. Yeah. Uh, the you know big muscly Ganon. Yeah. Ganon's the, the when he's samurai. a big monster. Right. Yeah. Um, very very high definite. What so you know really really well high uh, detailed, highly detailed, large uh, sculpt of big Ganon, large, which muscly. Which you know if uh, if you were around you know the the discourse that came out when uh, Tears of the Kingdom was first announced. People were like, oh, no, he's, he's hot. He's hot. Yeah. Why is he so yeah. daddy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Which is funny because you watch him in those um, uh, the cutscenes, and he's just terrifying. Oh, he's terrifying he's in scary. the cutscenes, yeah. Uh, now, the thing that I particularly enjoyed about this, and maybe this is actually just something that... Uh, maybe this is not that uncommon for these this style of things, but mm -hmm. um, this one, uh, so it's, you know, posable and everything... But it also comes with three different face plates, mm -hmm. like three different faces. It's got standard, shouting, and goading. <laughs> All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which, for me, of course, begs the question, like, if you've got the model and you've got the thing where you have interchangeable faces, yeah. like, why not more? Yeah. Can we have... How would he do? Like, can yeah. we have all the faces I, of Ganondorf? I want to have all different expressions. I want, I want him pogging. Yeah, yeah. I, want, <laughs> I want sexy Ganondorf face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to be sexy Ganondorf face would be, would yeah. be really good. Too. I want Ganondorf who just slipped on a banana peel face. Like, yeah, oh. Ganon who smelled something funny and he doesn't like it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we got to we got to get some. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe some like three D printers will get onto that and make their make some custom Ganondorf faces. Ganondorf being surprised by a cucumber. Ganondorf, but it's actually serious. Uh, it's actually secretly Ditto. So oh, he's just got really wide. Just the two <laughs> dots. Ditto got the two, two dots. Ditto yeah. face is good. DreamWorks eyebrow Ganondorf is a very good one. Yeah, good one, Lysander. Anyway. Uh, well, maybe when they make, because uh, after we get the game where we can actually play Zelda, maybe they'll make a game where you don't really play as Ganondorf, but you can just make him make faces. There are, like... Uh, what about just like you know the the like uh, the like menu screen from Mario sixty four where it's just like <laughs> Mario's like face that. and you get to stretch it just that but Ganon yeah. there there <laughs> is like I know that in in there's a lot of Japanese memes that use the uh, that use Woody the and like the posable Woody doll from Toy Story right mm -hmm. um, where they have changed out his head and stuff where he just looks like like these weird shit eating grins and stuff okay and I'm like. I know that like Plamo has been a thing in Japan for many years, and there are modelers there who are very good at it. And if people want to have very distressing faces made for Ganondorf, I'm sure there will be a cottage industry that crops up for people making all sorts of terrible things to click onto those faces. Don't, don't maybe maybe don't go in that cottage. Yeah, <laughs> you you basically said you wanted that though, Paul. Yeah, we're throwing this out there into the universe. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Speaking of psychological horror, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so this is a, a story that sort of uh, this kind of went back and forth a little bit because it's sort of um, so uh, oh, Omori, yeah. which is a uh, uh, psychological a, horror RPG. Yeah, it's supposed to be a really interesting uh, game about, well, you know, depression and. <laughs> The loss of people and mm -hmm. all the things that indie games do. I was gonna say an indie game, but it's secretly about depression. How about that? I don't think it's actually secretly. Uh, it I'm exactly. pretty sure it's blatant. Um, but so um, the they've been working on a physical edition okay. of it um, for Europe, 
From what I understand, there actually has already been a North American physical yeah, release I, I of this. Yeah, I think that's out okay. already. Okay, all right. Um, but they were working on a European physical release. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, it's a Spanish developer. Um, but they have uh, now um, posted uh, that the Switch and the PS4 versions, uh, physical releases, have been canceled um, say, we regret to inform you that the physical editions of Omori for PS4 and Switch have been canceled by the development team due to technical problems related to multilingual European localization. Mm. This news saddens us mm. as much as it does you. Um, obviously, that sucks. Yeah. Although, like I said, it's a little confusing because there it's not like there was already a physical release but this is for the multi this is like a physical release for the multilingual thing right um the main thing so the main reason why i marked this uh is you know like like the the elden ring patch notes or whatever i do i do like these you know due to technical problems related to the multilingual european localization right where it's like what is what does the technical mean in this? Yeah. yeah. So when you do a translation, uh, as you know, like Japanese lets you put essentially more English words down than we would be able to put down in English. Right in a single in a single dialogue screen. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I can imagine that some of your technical limitations would be how do you fit all those words into the thing is there a spacing thing cuz yeah Something but, like that. but so it's the, not a it's not a it's not a memory space thing anymore with with text no, it is more of a but if it's more of a if you have space. if you have a character with a thought bubble you don't do you and you have it in a different language that you have to fit more words into sure you have to change the thought bubble yes or the font size or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the question is one like has it is it has it already actually been localized but only digitally, and is that there a physical know. version that hasn't been? Looked? I would feel like if um, if they had a, a Switch version that is already out in all like multiple languages on the Switch, then then that part would have already been done. Yeah, because what I, the because the assumption I make is that from the technical side of things is that if you were already translating it into multiple languages, even if you're making it available digitally or or not, there is that there's that sense of um, what what you are doing is is you're defining localizations within your within your programming like when you're bundling it all together and you're saying oh but if somebody selects they want to see Italian then okay put all the Italian stuff in um, and it's it's probably not terribly difficult then to take this thing that is done and say now we will move it onto a onto onto physical hardware. So there has to be something else at play with them translating in the first place, is what it sounds like. Like, how do you get the thing? How do you get translations to represent within the game that has been made? My how uh, many languages do you have to translate into if you're releasing something in Europe? Yeah, yeah I guess that's I common don't. Too. I don't know. My uh, my my uh, uh, cheeky response mm -hmm. to the, my 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 joke take on this was. Uh, they got all this way and then realized that the font they were using didn't have an umlaut in it, and um, they were like, "Well, technical, techni we can't, we can't out. translate it." Yeah, <laughs> that's a good. We point, don't have though. those little dots. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, who, what if the person who designed the typeface for it was like, "We have the, we have the very simple, like, like twenty six and twenty six, and then, and uh, for for like uh, English, whatever, or they didn't include something for in Cyrillic, or they didn't include like, uh, like, we have to re redesign." All of the typeface from from scratch, or we have to do this and that. And it's like you know what? Too much hassle. Just stop. I mean, unfortunately, the real answer to this is what they mean by technical issues is issues that it's not financially viable to fix. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. anything, it could it could be fixed. Yeah. With sufficient application of time yeah. and resources, but it could probably be way more expensive but than what they just, could sell. But yeah, they they did the they did the calculation that they're like, we're not going to sell enough of this. It's not a big enough market for it to be worth it. Unfortunately, a um, couple other things here. Uh, the Xbox 360 store has shut down. Finally, uh, that's what MVG meant when they put up the thing, being like "Goodbye Xbox 360." Because I was like, 
did they all just stop working in a month? And it's like, no, the the store shut down. Okay, it makes well, a lot more sense. Well, I mean, sense. the 360 was the Since, one with the red wing of death, wasn't it? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. maybe. Maybe. Since 2005, so, you know, it's almost 20, uh, years. Almost 20 years. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, all of the same uh, things apply. You know, we talked about the Switch or the uh, the Wii store being shut down a little while ago. Or the 3DS store. It's the Wii yeah. U and the 3DS C shops yeah. went down. Right. Uh, and the same things apply. You know, there's a, a, a ton of games and software that that's the only place where it was. And right. it was never, nobody bothered to move it into the new system. So right. it's just, like, I mean, there was, there was warning on this. So, you know, video game history, people have uh, attempted to archive as much as possible. But, of course, a lot of it is still theoretically copyright even right. though the person who owns the copyright probably doesn't care yeah or doesn't care enough to update it to be in a useful or to say let me just re-upload well, this thing to like the, maybe they can't yeah. again like updating a thing to work on a newer system isn't like free right it's not that's exactly. not like a yeah. it's also not something you push a switch and it's just done right exactly there's yeah. timing and stuff involved in that um so you know so a lot of the games so some games that were there cannot be so if you bought your stuff and still have your xbox 360 you can still access things but oh, you just okay. can't do anything new okay so it doesn't need to talk to the internet and say oh i need to talk to the store to ensure that the license i own is still is still correct apparently not no. great that's good mm -hmm. um so yeah r.i.p to the xbox 360 store um i bought one thing on it Uno? at one point <laughs> no, isn't Uno free? That's why. Oh uh, well, evolved. I still have to download it. What did you buy? Uh, it costs two dollars. Mm. Uh -huh. It is. It's a game called I Made a Game with Zombies in It. Oh, uh, and, were there zombies in it? Yes. Okay, it's, good. It's basically like a dual. It was like a dual stick, like run around shooting, like Vampire Survivor. Yeah, except there's like way less complicated. Oh, but, so Smash TV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 99 90% of the game was that the there basically the guy wrote a really great song called I made a game with zombies in it. Oh okay. Wait, uh, did he write the song first and then he was like I should make that game? It's on Steam for free. Oh, oh great. Great. Uh and so I basically bought the game mm -hmm. as the equivalent of buying the song on like iTunes because oh. that was like the only way to get the song <laughs> fair yeah 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 uh, except that I died partway through the game you know you kept you had to actually play the game to get to the to, to hear to, the whole to song. hear the whole song you can't just but, leave it on the on the new game I screen made a game with zombies in it anyway he's it's really <laughs> it gets like more and more like you know uh, hardcore as it goes on as okay. more and more zombies come out it's really good <laughs> um anyway uh, doop, 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 doop. What else we got? Um, now we talked about Gran Turismo Seven cars being uh, flying through the air. Yes, made made a flubber. Yeah, yeah. Oh God damn it! Yeah, another game in former link that has been lost. But I think we showed well, the video last time. Yeah, we, how they yeah. just kind of go boop, you know, like yeah. yeah. We 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 did show that last time. Um. No. Uh, so there, the another game that I went a game that I wanted to talk about that. Apparently, I have to find another source for now. Mm. A game called Date Everything. Oh, yeah. I saw oh, the trailer yeah, I've for this. this. Uh, it is a sandbox dating simulator set in the comfort of your own home. That's nice. Featuring 100 fully acted dateable characters in your own home? That doesn't sound... <gasps> Except it's like your bed and your smoke alarm. Oh, and you shouldn't date your bed. Your vacuum and your piano. And your bed, yes. Uh, you sleep there. Basically, yeah, you are, you're a uh, or you, your BFA in customer service unfortunately goes to waste as you lose your job to an AI. But a mysterious stranger sends a gift: magical glasses called date of date viators, as in aviators. Mm. Uh, date viators, okay. Uh, which makes your house come alive and dateable. Each dateable object will open up. They have their own stories and <gasps> potentially will become your lovers, friends, or this enemies. This is how Tibby's mom happened. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's a rhythm heaven joke. For anyone who cares. Fully voice acted. At least three endings per dateable character. Oh, wow. 
that yeah. when people say things like that, the thing that bugs me is that um, when you have to when you have to design that much in a scenario, how deep can you make each scenario? Because is it like you only you you have maybe about an hour worth of gameplay in terms of like conversations and stuff and picking the right flags and getting to whatever. And then you're like, now I have to put my, my vacuum cleaner down and I have to go pick up the thing that stops my door from hitting the wall. I have to go. I mean, I feel like the vacuum cleaner as, as, as a dateable object is really kind of one of those, like, uh, get, go into the closet and do a quickie. I don't really think they're serious dating. He seems pretty nice dude. 20 minutes tops for the Here's the fridge. Yeah. It just, this is really like it's one of those. This is a very funny idea, um, and I'm sure there's. I'm sure what it's big on is breadth more than depth. <laughs> mm, I don't know about that. Well, so there's some of the funniest. So there's three have, endings like, for each person. It. Yeah, but that's like a lot. Like it's so many endings for so many different characters. But uh, planned release date to be announced. Unfortunately, so we don't know when it's going to come out. But God, it's got a DDR uh, scrolling screen, so you can see all the people you can possibly date. Uh, oh my yeah. goodness. There's a Shelly shelf. Apparently it's just a shelf. <laughs> Timothy timepiece clock. <laughs> of course, they all have like, you know, sexy avatar versions. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, there's the, there's Hoove the Hoover. Mm -hmm. He wants you to just call him Hoove. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. The trailer's oh, really good. The, Go watch the trailer. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. I will not be playing this game, but it, it, was, it was very funny. Uh, Beach doesn't really play video games. Don't, you see, not anymore. No. Um, I just watch anime and then I do I do long podcasts about it. They're technically not podcasts. No, I'm the only person in the room, <laughs> so I can call it what I like. I guess anything could be a podcast yeah. if you really try. Mm -hmm. Screeds, rants. What do we want to call them? <laughs> Like I'm always just thinking of Ian because Ian is constantly telling me things aren't co aren't podcasts. So as far as I go, I guess uh, nothing is a podcast. It's probably just easier to say that that certain things aren't podcasts. I would. Yeah. Think. Ian has very strict definitions of what a podcast is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Fair enough. It has to be distributed by RSS. Mm. Yeah, that is I think is number one. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, Come date everything in your house. Checking out this episode of uh, Chill Point. Um, of course, the episode of Checkpoint, if you haven't watched it yet, uh, you should check it out. If you're watching this on YouTube, it should be somewhere near this video, probably, in like the sidebar or something. Know, you could just subscribe to the channel. You should also yeah. do that. Or become a member, because that is a way to support the channel financially, among other ways, including patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. You can also just go to the store at store.loadingreadyrun.com and buy merchandise. Or let me know that you want to buy merchandise by putting your email address in the blank. Be sure to pick your shirt size first so I don't order the wrong size shirt. That would make If you sad. want merch that doesn't exist on the store, just put your email in any blank. Yeah. Just whisper it into an envelope and release it into the wind. It's a good uh, way to get your stuff taken uh, seriously. Uh, seriously, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us, and we will talk to all y'all later. Bye. <laughs>